Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed with Bonnie Siratori. I'm your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Siratori is a master tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. And today we're going to be continuing our discussion on past lives and the soul's journey. So today, um, how are you, Bonnie? I'm good. Looking forward to this one. It should be fun. Yeah, I, part one, it did. Uh, a lot of people really enjoyed the discussion. And we actually got uh, quite a few comments in uh, on YouTube when this went up. And so I had my um, questions that I wanted to ask for uh, this part two, and it maybe even extended to part three. But there were uh, comments, there were questions, and I felt like we should do this episode to answer their questions, because there were some pretty good ones. And mm -hmm. I know that the, the two individuals who asked, I'm ch choosing their questions, they've been clients of yours for a long time, I think probably years. So I, I wanted to, you know, I guess in a way reward their, uh, their loyalty to you. And mm -hmm. also because they're, they're genuine seekers, they're, they found your work, they're really trying to do the work. And so I really wanted to honor that and ask their questions. So for sure, this series of uh, episodes will be There'll definitely be a part three um, where I'll ask my questions then um, and maybe even a part four, because I do have like maybe eight more questions or so. So it's it's a long one, but I think it's good because people are really liking the mm -hmm. uh, past lives is such a, a big topic. It's huge mm -hmm. yeah. and it's a popular one. So a lot of people have opinions about it and uh, people are here to listen to what you know about this because you work in those realms and and help people with uh, their healing, uh, really profound healing by working in the past lives. So uh, you, you obviously have that personal experience, uh, <laughs> with that, the personal knowing of past lives. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I'm just going to go into, there's two people who ask questions. It, one of them is kind of a two-parter and the other, uh, maybe two questions within that. Okay. But before I actually get into their questions. I do want to kind of maybe set up the questions because uh, it's, it's that way people who are listening, if they didn't watch part one, by the way, go ahead and watch part one. I'll leave the link in the description. Go watch that, then come back to this and it'll give you a greater context of what we're talking about. But I think we should start with sort of like a, a bigger context um, picture so that when we get into these questions, it makes more sense. What is that? How does that sound, Bonnie? That sounds good. Yeah, so I guess one one thing that really needs to, I guess, be clarified on is the soul's journey. Um, and we did talk about that in part one, about how creation or all that is, is there's no individuality within that. And then we, we as individual souls break off from that, seemingly break off from that, um, that all that is. And then we, we as souls want to know ourselves in all ways, because that's, we're an extension of creation, we're an expression of creation, which is all that is. So we, we basically want to know ourselves in the, the light and the dark and the good, bad, ugly in every way, right? And, and so I think that kind of needs to be explained uh, at least a little bit before we get, get into the questions that uh, were in the comments in part one. So could you mm -hmm. talk about that, Bonnie? Yes, okay. So let's just really back up, like really back up, all right, so that people can get a better sense of the evolution of consciousness, the evolution of actual human beings, okay? So if we go back to prior to any awareness of awareness itself, there is existence, probably mostly dark energy, darkness, but there is still a consciousness. That consciousness the moment it became aware of its own awareness, which is what we all have, we are all aware. In fact, I'd like everyone just for a moment to tune in to their own awareness, okay? It's not your mind, it's not your thoughts, it's the part of you, it's the you, it's your awareness, your consciousness that is actually aware of everything, meaning it is aware of my voice, it's an awareness of seeing through your eyes, hearing through your ears, tasting through your mouth, the smells. It is the awareness 
that is consciousness itself that we are all are. We're all the same awareness. Okay. So we come back to in that state where awareness has no awareness of anything, just it's just existing. The moment awareness actually became aware of its own consciousness, its own awareness, like us, then there's an, a movement in that energy that literally created a moving movement of energy, a movement of consciousness, movement in just this vastness of just energy of consciousness itself. In that moment of awareness, it began to create an energy frequency that began to move. That movement began to create everything that we experience now, all the planets, everything. Okay, so everything began to have a movement. Everything became like an awareness of awareness itself. But there still is no thought of, oh, I think I'll create a moon. No, that's not what happens. It's still energy moving in its own self, in its own consciousness, co-creating and evolving. So let's move forward trillions of years to where we have planet Earth. Okay, the Earth is being formed as well. Same thing. It's all these energy frequencies. I've seen it before. I've been shown and I've seen that at first it's like these energy frequencies and, and then they kind of start coming together and moving in those, what we're now seeing in, in all the, you know, like in the galaxies and the universe, things that, like that. But when we come back to the planet Earth and how it began to have like, like a live thing. So at first we're just like amoebas. We don't have anything. It's just that any awareness, there's still no mind thoughts. There is no mind. There's just that creation thing that, that we were doing. So amoebas, you know, having an experience. And then as that continues to grow and evolve, let's just keep moving forward, forward, forward until we start to actually have what we would call mankind. Okay, mankind, human, humanoid, human being, physical forms. So in that, then we began to create um you know, the survival mechanism, okay? So, and then that survival, then we began to, obviously we would recreate, re reincarnate, you know, evolving. Like when we go back, let's go back again to that place where creation is creating, creation has its own awareness. Creation is everything. It is the all that is. Everything that is in existence itself is creation, everything, okay? So, from that place, this is where we are right now, okay? In this time period right here, right now, everything has evolved to bring us to these places, to this point in time. But basically, you know, the original creation is consciousness itself, which we all are, you know, awareness, which we all are. It's all the same awareness, which is kind of cool when you think about it. You know, like right now, you and I, have the same awareness, as does every single sentient being that has ever existed, that exists right now and ever will be. It's the same awareness. So when we, you know, we when we started doing the incarnational experiences, you know, creation itself, in that evolution of creating, it began to what we would call like not that it would leave itself. But a, like a little, like a, a split, mind, minic, minuscule energy of consciousness would go into one of these amoebas. Okay, so same thing over time. So if we if we were just to use this as the all that is, and then we see these little fingers right here, this is now what we would call the souls. They're still connected to the all that is. They just don't have that memory. Okay, but we all are still connected to the totality of all existence, to everything that is and what we've come to right here, right now. And the whole experience of reincarnating, you know, it's like we, we, we maintain that individuality, so to speak, even though when we come back into, there is no individuality. We're all still the oneness. But and when we're still incarnating and we're still having all these experiences, here's Cynthia, here's me, you know, and here's our other friends. And we will continually come back into physical form repeatedly until we are at a stage or a level of where we basically go back into the oneness. 
Well, Bonnie, I, that's a perfect segue to the first question that one of your clients asked in the, the comment section of the part one video. And she says, it doesn't really seem fair that we go through hundreds of lives of trauma and heartache, and then we finally heal ourselves and find our way back to the state of love and light, only to then be reabsorbed back into the light and lose our individuality. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then she goes and says, I'm guessing the whole process will start again. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah. do you want to talk about that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. It always cracks me up because um, when I think about my life way, way back, I remember when I first started realizing or having awarenesses around uh, the, the actual truth that in t- ultimately the desire is to go back into the oneness to where we're no longer separate. We're, st- we're in the consciousness of the all that is. And I remember feeling like, well, what about me? I don't want to just be gone and not have any more me ever again. You know, I was really upset about that. And here's what here's what what's really happening. So, if you just imagine the frequency of of all of the all that is awareness, like we we can go into that state of awareness. We do we can do that, and we can sit in in within our own selves and literally touch right into that awareness. Okay. In there, there is no sense of separation. There's no neediness. There's no wanting. There's no judging. There's no poor me. There's no victim. There's none of that. It's just pure awareness. It's consciousness, okay? When we're living that, there's no lack. There's no fear. There's no anxiety. It's like there's, it's just that full, fully expression or full sense of oneness and unconditional love. So, as souls evolving, coming back to that particular question, you know, like we have hundreds of lifetimes and we have all these sufferings. Okay, so here's the deal. Every lifetime, we have the opportunity to end our suffering. Okay, unfortunately, we never had teachings to teach us how to do that. Okay, so what did we do? We did our best. We come in, we have an experience, we take it personal. We're always in life to survival. And when you think about survival, I'm, I'm talking severe survival, ultimately the survival of life death, all right? When we are living lifetimes, let's go way, way back in our live streams, like way back into humanity when, when survival was, you know, gathering food, hunting, you know, lot, most people were starving to death. That was a very typical thing. It was very common for people to be extremely hungry during the, the winter months, you know, times of, of when there wasn't plenty. So every time we have an experience that seemingly feels traumatizing, we anchor that in and we carry that over to our soul imprint. What happens is, is we, we're going to recreate the scenario again because at our higher levels, our oversoul levels, our God self levels, our super consciousness levels are all working together to bring us the ultimate goal, which is back into oneness. Okay. So every time we incarnate, there are all these parts of us, aspects of us are bringing us opportunities repeatedly. But what it seems like to us is, oh my gosh, we're being tortured, we're being punished. I must be something wrong with me. I must be bad. Why is this happening to me? But this is all ego. And because we don't have the teachings, then we take it personal. And then we begin to believe those very things. I'm being punished. I'm being tortured. Something's wrong with me. I've done something bad. And we don't go through what we're trying to go through. See, the thing about creation is it has no mind. There's no mind. There's no emotion. Okay. There's no thought. There's no physical form. It's pure awareness. Can you grab hold of pure awareness? I don't think so. Go ahead. Try and grab it. Okay. Not going to happen. So that energy that, that we are going back to is unlike anything we experience on planet earth. So also in that energy of consciousness, it doesn't hold on to anything. And yet it knows everything fully, completely fully. So let's just go back in time and let's just go back and let's go into time, early, early manhood, man, early man, you know, Neanderthal or whatever you call him, 
where they did the caves, cave dwellers, things of that nature. Again, it's about survival. Any kind of injuries meant could possibly meant death. So from that early stages of a soul's evolution, every time it comes back in, it's still in that survival mode because somewhere life was threatened. Maybe there was a lack of food or maybe there was injury, but whatever that is, that energy gets imprinted, what I call the soul imprint. It gets carried over. And when we incarnate again, that energy is being carried forth. Nothing is being done to us. Creation isn't punishing anyone. Creation isn't judging anyone. Creation isn't destroying anyone. It's, that simply isn't the truth. What's happening as souls, we are the ones creating our reality because we're not going through our experiences. Now, let's just, go, let's just say that that caveman that fell, let's just say he broke, okay, yeah, yeah, broke, shattered the knee. Now he can't walk. He's no longer, um, you know, an active participant of the clan. Now he's dead weight. They're not going to bother. They're going to leave him behind. So they leave him behind. Okay. So here's a couple things right here. Abandonment, rejection, cast out. Okay. And physical injury, that means ultimate death. All right. So let's just say that that caveman, you know, somehow knowingly knew, oh, this is all about knowing myself, know thyself in all ways. And so now I'm, I'm being asked to know myself in the throes of dying through starvation, the experience of having physical pain and incapable of providing for myself, caring for myself, and my tribe has left me behind. They have abandoned me. I've been ostracized. I've been cast out. All of those are emotional energies, okay? It's the emotion that carries things over. So let's just say this caveman somehow just knew how to do this and went through all of those emotions that were presenting because of that injury and what that all meant, the ramifications of all of it. Ultimately, he still died. Ultimately, he still starved to death, okay? Ultimately, you know, he was abandoned, but Rather than holding on and taking it personal, he went through all of those emotions that rose, arose from within to know himself in these ways. And guess what happens? Next incarnation, he's not packing that same garbage with him to recreate it again and again. And for some people, hundreds, even thousands of lifetimes, the same issues repeatedly because nobody has the teachings. Okay. It's all about knowing yourself fully so that you can go back into the oneness. Creation knows everything ultimately all the way, all the way. Okay. There's nothing creation doesn't know. For us to go back into that oneness, we must know ourselves as creation itself. How do we do that? Whatever presents in our world, if we're having a reaction or we're having some kind of angst, we don't know ourselves in this. And to know thyself in anything means to completely surrender to that, to that emotion, to that experience with the heart wide open and let the energy move. And then you do know yourself in all of that. Okay. So this comes back to that very question. Again, God isn't doing anything. Creation isn't doing anything. We are the creators. We are having experiences, we are taking things personal, we are not letting ourselves to know ourselves in these experiences. Therefore, we carry it over and over and over and over, and we'll continue to carry it over and over for eternity until you wake up and realize, oh, I need to feel this. Okay? I mean, isn't that the whole thing? I mean, how many people nowadays, you got, Cynthia, I was teaching this stuff way back in the 60s, okay? So now we got people all on board. Oh, you got to feel your emotions. Oh, now you have to come in and feel. Well, duh, you, that's the truth. But it's more than just feel. It's the surrender to them all the way. Know them and be done. It's that simple. Okay. So coming back to those questions, we're not being punished. No one's doing something to us. We are the ones doing it to ourselves because we didn't get the lessons because we didn't surrender because we didn't know we had no teachings. We had no one to demonstrate, to show us 
the way we do now, right here, right now. So just to go back a little bit to that question, uh, she talked about it doesn't seem fair. In a way, it is not even really about that. It's not even really about fairness because there's there's no one that's really doing anything other than our higher selves are trying to get us to get it, basically. Right. And I, right. I, if it's okay, I would like to share a little bit. Um, you know, I, I also felt that way too. Like if I read that question a year ago, I probably would totally agree with her. <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> seriously, yeah. I, I would have. Yeah. Uh, but now I feel, you know, I, I still have a lot to do, uh, obviously, but... I'm clearer, much clearer now to the point where certain things that I know I I kept repeating over and over again in this lifetime, and I probably did for many, many lifetimes. When I look at this question, I I think back at those instances, and it just doesn't matter anymore. Like once I'm over it, Mm -hmm. I don't even even think about it. It's not even a question. Like I, I, in many ways, those things, it it feel like it never even happened. And I don't even think, oh, it's not fair that uh, it, it's sort of just, it's done, it's complete. And so it's mm-hmm. not even a, it's not even an issue. Like, I don't even think right. about that. So would you say that's, that kind of is the, um, that's how it is for people when they get yes. to there? Like, it, yes. Yeah. So once you, once you have learned something, once you have known thyself in particular energy frequencies, it t- particular emotions, situations, events, circumstances, When you do that and you go through all of that emotional frequency, you're done with it. There's nothing in you that has a charge or a zing anymore. When you think about that same kind of thought or same kind of feeling, most of the time you can't even find it. You can't find the thought. You can't find the feeling. There's no reaction. And then remember, we create from our subconscious. So whatever's in there, that's what we're drawing to us. When that no longer exists in our subconscious, we can't pull it to us because we no longer have that in us. I mean, it doesn't mean that we might be tested or whatever, like maybe something to present looks the same. But again, our reaction is like, eh, been there, done that. I'm over that one. And it just passes by. But then the next piece will come up. Okay, that's what's up. So I do have another question from um, a comment. and But it seemed like you already answered it. but. I don't know if you want to add any more. Maybe, maybe okay. I'll ask this um, anyway, because I, mm-hmm. you did answer it, but I'll ask it anyway and see if you want to add mm-hmm. anything. Okay. So an, another person asked, why did source create, create our souls in, in the way where it's hard to even understand how to unravel and heal? Mm-hmm. Okay. So again, there is no intentional harm being caused here. Okay. There's nothing intentional. Again, it's not creation creating us. Creation became us. Okay. Remember, this is the all that is. Here's the fingers. We're all connected. We just don't see it. We see this, this here up and then this. Okay. So as creation became into, brought consciousness into aliveness, like a live thing, like amoebas. Amoebas are alive, okay? They don't have eye, they don't have minds, they're just energy consciousness in these little forms. So creation, of course, would split off into, you know, hundreds, thousands, millions of different life forms, okay? Again, little things, and all these little things evolved into us, okay? Just imagine that. Imagine being a little amoeba and then imagine ev- evolving, oh, you know, re- until we come into the human form. And now here we are in, you know, this time period. Okay. So again, creation didn't cause anything. It's not causing any suffering. It's all about experience. When you hit m- m- material world, the Maya, the physical form, there's a density here. You don't have that when you're in pure awareness. There is nothing to touch. There are no emotions, okay? It's just awareness, aware of awareness. So it's in the physical form. That's where everything occurs as far as what we experience. You know, we hurt ourselves. We hit the wall. We're going to feel that, you know, if we have an accident, we're going to be hurt. If we, 
eat poison, we're going to get sick, maybe even die, okay? It's the physical realm. None of that occurs in the awareness, okay? But again, we're coming back to these experiences. So if you've been around trillions of years as some, some form of consciousness coming into the world, into the world, you know, coming physical, you have a lot of experiences, okay? But none of these did creation go, I think we're going to make sure you suffer. That's not what's up, okay? In our own blindness, in our own focus of our direct experience, when we're in these human forms, these human bodies, all we're really aware of is ourself. We're aware of our reactions. We take everything personal because all we know is ourselves. So no matter what we experience, it's all about us. We can't really know anybody else. We're not living anybody else's experiences. And we are believing that we are the center of the universe because in a sense we are. And yet we're the ones drawing conclusions. We're the ones creating our own beliefs. We're the ones buying into other people's misperceptions and lies and deceit. Are there, are there blindness? Are there, you know, whatever they're believing that, you know, they're, they're believing it, obviously. And then other people are buying into that. So all of us are always evolving in our consciousness. All of us are still always connected to the all that is, okay, all of us. And we're still waking up, we're having, we're still having direct experiences, we're still feeling like a victim, or we're still feeling like you did this to me, you hurt me, you abandoned me, you rejected me, you don't love me, okay, none of it's true and real, okay, I mean, some, someone may not love you, but bottom line is this, it's all internal, we internalize everything, and again, we are the ones creating our reality, you know, and then over time, as we begin to evolve, as we begin to grow more into that human experience, the human consciousness, moving out of all those other states of awareness that we've lived, but now we're in that human, then we begin to create patterns and we begin to create beliefs and we begin to uh, have thoughts that this is better than that, or this color is better than that color, or you know, just look at all the different religions that have been created and the belief systems around those religions and how we'll kill each other over those religions. I mean, it just goes on and on what we've created from trillions of years ago on planet Earth. Okay. We're still evolving. We're still co-creating. We are still manifesting our worlds and we're, and now We've made agreements and contracts to have certain experiences to help ourselves, to help each other unravel those core woundings that came from way back when you were caveman days or even beyond. Okay. So it's all about evolving, evolution, waking up, ultimately to go back into that oneness. And ultimately, creation isn't, isn't the one causing suffering. And yet here, here we are, we are all only that. There is only creation. There is nothing but creation. So here's creation in trillions of forms over time. You know, now we've got, I don't know, some kind of billion, some billion people on the planet. They're all still creation, doing their little thing, believing they're separate, believing they're broken and wounded and shattered, believing they're not loved, and then believing they're right and, you know, they'll hurt others over it. Okay, so here we are totally, you know, blind to what's really going on here, asleep to what we're really, what's really being offered and what we're really moving towards. And at the same time, we're waking up where people are realizing people are becoming informed. People are questioning bigger, deeper questions and, you know, religions and belief systems are all being questioned because none of them are supporting people's beliefs that they're, what they're, what they're looking for from within. There's no support. There's nothing that really gives them an answer. What this is really about. Okay. And when you look at what we're really doing, when you look at what we're talking about right here, right now, you can understand it. You can grasp it. No one is punishing you. And we're all creator incarnate. We're all divine beings co-creating together, totally thinking we're separate when we're not. And yet we believe that. And ultimately, you know, where we got all these aspects of us, all the different parts of our own selves, helping us to wake up, helping us to, you know, to bring those 
opportunities so that we can, you know, drop in and, and have these awakening experiences. So we open the heart. So we drop all our wounding. So we live life in that place of more of a heart open, you know, heart opening, which is the new paradigm, which is what we're all trying to, not all, but many of us are moving in that direction. Those that don't, they'll be left behind. They'll incarnate somewhere else. Won't be planning incarnating on planet earth because the light frequency be too high vibrational frequency, the density of darkness and greed and hatred and anger and frustration and wanting to harm people and jealousy and all that kind of stuff. It can exist because it's not in that frequency of light. That's ultimately what we're doing, where we're going. Okay. But coming back to that same question, creation isn't punishing anyone. Creation is evolving in its own self, knowing itself in all these different ways. There's nothing but creation. Bonnie, so the last question in that comment, uh, I'll just read it to you. Uh, how can a soul be so dumb to think that it will heal in this next life when it was unsuccessful for hundreds of lifetimes to heal those particular issues? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. All right. So think about this. When we're not in a physical body, when we're in that place of where the all that is, when we're in pure awareness, pure consciousness, we're not having any wounding. We don't have the same issues. We don't have any issues, basically, so to speak. Um, but what happens is, is when we make these agreements on some level, we're believing we're going to be able to do it this time. Okay. Every lifetime, we believe we're going to be able to do it. But the problem is, is when we come in, we totally forget. We forget who we are. We forget where we come from. We forget everything. So in the forgetting, it's like starting, starting fresh, right? All over again, kind of like that movie Groundhog Day. You know what I mean? It's like we come back in, we're totally asleep to what we've experienced, what we've relived, and, and now we're, we're recreating it again. But here's the thing about our soul levels, people, is we really don't have an attachment if we get it right or we don't, or if we get liberated or we don't. I mean, we have eternity, people, to know thyself. We have eternity to go back into the oneness. In the meantime, we keep having these amazing experiences, believing that we're, you know, we're, we're being punished or tortured or we must be bad. Sometimes our higher levels are probably laughing about our belief systems, what we're believing. They're constantly pulling us into situations that will activate these core wounds like we agreed to, to have ourselves do and all the soul family to do that with that simple belief that we're going to do it. We're going to get it right. We're going to unravel it. And again, think about how when you're in that core, when you're in your center, when you're in that space of pure awareness, when you're in your own divine light, your unconditional love and light, there's nothing wrong. There's no problem. There's no pain. There's no suffering. There's no poor me. There's no victim. There's no anger. It's just that state of pure unconditional love and light. Okay. So again, the soul isn't attached to whether we get it or we don't get it. I mean, ultimately they're helping where our own higher levels are all these levels of who we are, are helping to bring us the opportunities and we'll take them and, and do them or we won't. And if not, then we're going to come back and do it again. So, you know, it's just, I think it's important to keep things kind of light. Don't take things so serious. I mean, I know when we're, <laughs> when we're starving to death or we're not going to be pay our rent or, you know, some kind of trauma or illness or we're losing people we love, of course, it feels very, very intense. And yet, when we're not in the physical body, when we're no longer attached to all of this and we've gone into the light, we've also... Um, you know, we're awakening, we're seeing, our, we're understanding all our, our, what we've learned, what we haven't learned. There's lots of things that are happening when we're no longer in a physical form. But ultimately, you know, it's like, it doesn't really matter. Okay, bottom line, it doesn't really matter. And we'll do our best every time. We'll do what we're capable of every time. And ultimately, what's really cool is the frequency of the light is also assisting us to be able to step up in a different way. You know, the whole healing process is now finally tangible. It's finally, we are finally able to truly do it. When we were in the depths of darkness, there's no way 
we were in those like the dark ages and remember all the you know the crusades and the all the the, the diseases all these things that were happening life was so intense now we have the opportunity because now more light is shining everything will be easier anybody desiring to wake up they just have to have that desire and things will start presenting to help that happen okay so again it's the soul evo soul's evolution we're not being punished we're waking up we're doing our best and we'll keep doing our best and in time we will wake up that's the promise that's that's the guarantee of all souls evolving as they evolve as they finally let go of and creation has known itself in all these different ways in the experience of you because that's really who it is creation that part wakes up be done merge back into oneness love and light and and then you know watching and witnessing <laughs> the rest of the self waking up and having all these experiences so it's quite a dance and it's a pretty awesome dance. And it wasn't like it was, you know, like, oh, okay, creation decided, oh, let's just do this. No, it was the evolution. Everything was evolving. Everything was creating. Everything was being co-created in, in all togetherness simultaneously for all existence. So again, we're not being punished. We're doing our best. We are waking up and have the desire. And I promise you, with the new paradigm happening, things will present really quickly. I think that a good point, too, is that it just really depends on your perspective and your perspective changes when you do this type of work and clearing work. And so uh, I, the perspective that that individual has right now is that, you know, it's it, our souls are dumb for for <laughs> for that. And I, I completely understand. But ultimately, yeah. it comes down to like a, a different perspective on on how you view the journey, mm -hmm. I guess. Right, right. And understanding and, it as well to right. understand what's, what's really happening. And I feel like I'm going to get it right this time. What do you think, Bonnie? <laughs> <laughs> Is that Sorry. A no? Yes. I didn't say no. I was just thinking, I, I mean, I have so many people say that it cracks me up. I mean, I've not, I don't even say that. Okay. And I'm still unraveling and I feel like I'm pretty highly evolved. Um, are you going to wake up in this lifetime? Do you really want to know? Maybe. You have that potential. Absolutely. Everyone does. Yes. Okay. I feel like I'm, I'm going to do it. All righty, girl, <laughs> you do it. Show the way. So I, mean, I was thinking since you brought up a few times about that state of awareness within and that we all could connect to it, maybe in not this episode, but maybe the next one or part four, if you could do an exercise to lead us to that. Because mm -hmm. I think yes. it's really important that people have their own direct experience of what it is that you're talking about. And, and this is something you talk about, too, is you don't want people to just take your word for it or take anybody's word for it. Mm -hmm. You always do uh, let people know that they have the ability to know all these things themselves. Mm -hmm. And you talk about you, how you encourage people to go direct into their, yeah. into their own right. knowing. So maybe... Is that something you think? You oh, yeah, that'd do? be awesome. Yes, I'll do that for sure. Yes, it's a pretty potent, powerful experience. And once you once you know what you're doing, once you've done it, you can do it any time. And pretty soon it's just like, boom, you're there. It's awesome. All right, guys, that's a great thing to look forward to. So please subscribe and follow us and you'll you'll be uh, have you'll have a little treat in a future episode uh, for this series on past lives and journeys. Soul journey. Well, thank you, Bonnie. This was an incredible conversation uh, that really went deep into the soul's journey and gave, I feel like, a bigger context for everything that we discussed in part one. So hopefully mm -hmm. it helps people to understand that. And please, everybody stay tuned because there will be a part three, three and a part four. Mm -hmm. And if you have any other questions, let us know in the comments. And Or if you just want to make a comment, uh, let us know what you think about um, this podcast, this particular series. And if you have any suggestions for any future episodes uh, that you want us to talk about particular topics, let us know because we, we definitely want to, with, this is for um, all of you. So we want to uh, let you know that it's, please, you're welcome to comment. Let us know what kind of topics you want uh, to hear here on Consciousness Unleashed. And once again, if you are, watching this on YouTube, please 
like the video, it really helps us. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, comment below. And if you are on Apple, or if you're not an Apple, go on Apple and actually leave a review for Consciousness Unleashed. That would really help Bonnie. Mm, and sweet. Nice. Yeah. Is there is there anything you want to end with for today's episode, Bonnie? Uh, I think that just knowing that all is well, nothing's wrong, you're right on track, everything's perfect, divine plan unfolding, you're a part of that. So relax into your life and do your best to keep showing up and realize that you are creating your reality 100% and we're all doing soul dancing together. So we're in it together. We all want the same thing. We're all going to the same place. Thank you so much again, Bonnie. This was awesome. Uh, everybody, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time.